Hi there, this is Chloe from Inner Whispers. This video isn't exactly an unboxing because this deck came to me simply wrapped in cellophane and the little booklet here is in fact from a PDF and the friend who gifted me this deck printed it out for me. This is the Servants of Light Tarot uh, illustrated by Joe Gill or Gill and Anthony Clark and with copyright to Dolores Ashcroft Novicki in 1991. The story goes that Dolores was having a clear out and found a whole box of these cellophane wrapped but unboxed decks which are now available. So it's quite an interesting deck and I thought I would share that with you today. So this is the exact order that the cards came in. They literally were cellophane wrapped, nothing else. This is how they were. So let's have a look. There's a lot of nudity in this deck, which doesn't bother me in the slightest, but some people may have an issue with. And the cards are quite thick, thicker than a regular deck for sure. I find it impossible to hold the whole lot in the hand at once. They are very colourful and I find the artwork quite accomplished. It's not super pretty but it is still quite lovely. So yes, I guess what I'm trying to say is it isn't overly pretty but there's still a lot of symbolic depth to it and it's clearly fairly accomplished artwork. No sort of teen student level here. There's quite a lot of Egyptian influence in some of the majors and we have the four corners on a lot of the cards. We'll come back to that later. The Hermit has a Kabbalistic symbol and there's this stark red and white of the Strength card which strikes me as quite peculiar but I also get where it's coming from. Um, you have that same red and white on traditional Thoth decks for uh, the Empress and the Emperor and the Lovers so it's that mingling. Quite traditional in some of the cards and much less so in others. Egyptian influence. And the suits have been totally renamed as have the court cards and the court cards are really quite different in that regard and I don't quite get exactly where they're coming from but hey it's certainly interesting. So in each um, row of court cards so to speak we start with the keeper, which is assigned the element of earth. So that could be the page, the earth of air in the keeper of weapons, which is the suit of swords. The user is fire. So some people would attribute that to the knight. Um, if this is a more sort of Thoth-based system, then that would be the king, which kind of makes sense. We then have the giver of weapons, and this is associated with water. This does have quite queenly feel to it. And then we end with the maker, who is heir of earth. So I think this would be equivalent to the Thoth um, kings, as opposed to the Thoth knights, if you see what I mean. The knights being the more mature aspect of the Thoth system of seeing the court cards. So it's quite different. It takes some getting used to or else you could simply just use the images rather than worrying over much about how they would be assigned to more traditional court cards. Let's carry on and see the rest of them. So here's the Ten of Swords. Some of them, as you see, are quite simple, almost 
semi-illustrated, whereas others are very fully illustrated, and quite beautifully so. I think this will actually make a very interesting reading deck. And the primes, instead of aces, have these four corner symbols. So connecting them with the world card and with the wheel card. So the keeper would be the page, the user would be the knight, the giver, the queen, and the maker, the king, I think. Once again, quite different, ten of staves or ten of wands. It has a similarly oppressive feel, but not quite the same sense of burden, more a sense of entrapment. And a very, very stable, unmoving eight of staves. The rest of the cards can more easily, for me, find a, a commonality with more rider weight or traditional meanings. Prime of staves, once again the four heads. And there's a lot of honeybees in this, which of course are symbols of the goddess. Keeper, user, giver, and maker. This one looks like a female figure even though the maker would be the air aspect of the court cards. Very seasonal. This almost looks like Easter eggs. And there's quite a lot of Motley Fools in here as well. Even here we have the Motley Fools arm. Four honeybees here for the prime of spheres. Sorry. And the equivalent of the cups are crescents, which I think works very nicely and it gives a very spiritual edge to these cards somehow, connecting them with the moon. For example, this looks like the drawing down of the moon ritual, which the servants of light, I think, would have practiced. So once again, not totally traditional, yet there is a way to link most of the cards to traditional notions and some very interesting perspectives. You'll certainly notice if you have the crescents in your reading, they are very uniform in colour. They connect well with one another. Prime, the ace, and there is one blank card at the end. Let's take a quick little look at this. As I say, it comes as a PDF, and my friend printed this out for me. It gives a little explanation about uh, the copyright and how these cards were found, and then two to a page explanations of the majors and there's an Alexandrian sigil embossed onto every page. When we look at the majors these give quite detailed explanations in some ways, in fact here there's three to a page. So we have, for example, the moon. Ruler is, rulership is Pisces, Hebrew letter is Kuf, the back of the head, numerical value 12. The moon card shows a dreamscape, so they describe the card. And it is literally just a description. 
though, for example, maybe this is a picture of that time or maybe it is a picture of the future. Anything to do with the moon will always have two sides, the bright side and the hidden side. Take your choice. So there is a sort of interpretive element to it. Then we have the court cards. Sorry, this hasn't been stapled because I don't have a stapler that will do the job. So it goes through all of the court cards separately and then moves on to the minors. And these give what are quite, shall we say, narrow uh, fortune-telling type meanings. For example, the Ten of Spheres says, um, the fulfillment of wishes, wealth, prosperity, power, and material possessions. You have become part of the establishment. There may be a knighthood in the offing if you play your tarot cards right. You can also be certain of handing your position and wealth on to the next generation. Reversed, you will get none of this and will probably receive a writ in the next post. The loss of legal battles, of money and of prestige, disinheritance, loss of face and position in society are all indicated. Which, for a daily draw, I'm really not going with that. But hey. So, the little booklet has its pros and its cons, but certainly the cards are looking quite fascinating. Blessed be.